A girl among the few survivors of a dystopian Earth riding a war tank. She fights against the tyranny of a mega corporation that dominates the remaining potable water supply of the planet. On this episode, we bring you Tank Girl. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, my name is George McHale. I'm joined by novelist Andrew Buckley, uh, writer, editor-in-chief of Merck Magazine, uh, Murphy, and writer-illustrator GMB Kamichek. Uh, today we're talking about uh, the 1995 film Tank Girl. Uh, let's get into it. Let's get into the good. What do we like about Tank Girl? The source material. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if it's not blatantly obvious yet, I am a diehard Tank Girl fan. Um, I have been since I was six years old and I, I was introduced to the movie first and then the comics, the comics I've been just collecting throughout, throughout my life. I do love the movie because I saw it first. <laughs> I know that there's a, there's a whole lot of, especially from the creators of the comic, there's definitely a lot of hate towards the movie, but I, I really do legitimately love Lori Petty's Tank Girl. And uh, when you hear her talk and anything else, I just think, ah, it's Tank Girl. <laughs> I can't believe her in anything else. Yeah, I thought she was amazing as Tank Girl, actually. It's the one, it's the cutscenes. Like, you can now find all kinds of footage that has the, like, logo stamped across it, property of MGM or whatever. So I guess it was United Artists, I think, put it together. But where you can see a bunch of outtakes of her being 10 out of 10 Tank Girl that they cut, that the studio cut. What's going on? It's such a tragedy such a tragedy um i'm tank girl uh adjacent i'm a fan of tank girl source material i saw the movie a whole bunch when i was younger in different snippets when it came out people had bootleg copies of it they watch it at uh at parties i was at and so i saw the first part the last part and the middle in different orders depending um and actually i think i prefer that version uh, to it but uh, wear my gorilla shirt because also uh, the uh, creator of Tank Girl and Gorillas uh, says they take place in the same universe. So I am not only adjacent to Murphy, but I am here in my gorilla shirt, Tank Girl adjacent. a whole other universe here on the screen. I like Lori Petty a lot. Uh, she's, she's a great actress, in my opinion. She's a uh, league of her own, uh, of their own. Uh, she's uh, in... Uh, yeah, she was in Point Break. Point Break. Yeah. yeah, no, she's she's so good. And now she showed up in uh, Orange is the New Black. And I was like, Great. where do I know yeah. this? Where do I know this actress from? And like, I didn't recognize her. And I I had never seen Tank Girl until uh, yesterday, uh, in preparation for for this review. And uh, I finally feel what you guys feel whenever I offend you guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize it was Lori Petty in this movie because mm -hmm. if you look at the box art from the you know VHS as you did when you were you know roaming the aisles of Blockbuster, it, it's not totally apparent because she's got the goggles on and stuff, and it's I, I didn't put it together that it was her. And I had I had a huge crush on Lori Petty when I was growing up, and I would have totally watched it if I knew it was her in it. But it, it just that little tidbit of information eluded me. I found it easy to have a new crush on her watching tank girl again i was just really blown away with so, there's so many nods as much as the movie falls short of being a really great tank girl movie if you're a fan of the source material there is so much care by the production team to try and make tank girl look like tank girl from that like wild haircuts that are like different in every scene to the you know that punk rock aesthetic but it was like you know that brit pop punk rock post apocalypse well like. it's also it's also not and i think this is this is the thing that makes that makes tank girl such like a feminine icon as far as to me is that she dresses like yeah she wears like skimpy clothes and little things but none of it's like she'll put something together that looks ridiculous and it's you don't look at it and go oh that's hot you look at it and you go that's tank girl yeah. because it's just random pieces and she just and that's that's the thing is that she wears probably 30 outfits throughout throughout the whole movie and that's something that i really like is that she's kind of like a little bit you know, she's just having fun through all of it and that's something that's very tank girl i found the character of tank girl to be someone i liked you know she was resilient she never 
gave up. She never let the bad guys know that they were getting to her. Um, and she was just kind of having fun the whole time. I I like that. I thought she was really tough and and fun and funny and goofy and uh yeah, and you know the things that they put her through too, like that uh torture scene, like I was thinking about it when she's in that tube, like kind of mm-hmm. upside down like thing. The Still whole that they put her yeah and uh yeah she's just she's tough like uh, like because you're thinking of it like that form of torture would just be terrible and, and what a uh, horrible world dominated by bro dudes that the power what is it water and power company water or whatever, and power. Mm-hmm. they are just the worst most toxic environment and she's just has the greatest fuck you attitude the entire time even when she's not "Quote unquote resisting everything in her is resisting everything they're doing. It's so well. So when she when she ends up in the water and power as pretty much a slave, we're introduced to this to this other character who who's going to end up being Jet Girl, and you see that she's also got this dude that's breathing down her neck. It's just fucking creep. And then Laurie Petty just comes in there and just is oh you messing with my girlfriend? Like immediately just kind of like exudes this well fuck you confidence that just kind of seeps into Jet Girl throughout the movie. And by the end of it, she's got that same kind of just like, oh, whatever, attitude. And it's like, it's 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 definitely, it's it's intoxicating to the people around her that feel powerless. They're like, well, I have power. I just have to take it. I have, I have like the opposite journey to Greg to this movie in that I remember seeing the trailer when I was younger and I thought it looked super fucking cool. And I watched the movie and I was like, eh, it's all right. But I had no connection to the source material and couldn't even find the source material in the UK. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to have any connection with this. And consequently didn't. And then we went to watch it for this. I couldn't find it streaming anywhere that I jumped to pay for it. So I ended up watching it in bits and pieces on YouTube the same way that uh, Greg watched it in bits and pieces on Bootlegs Legs <laughs> when he was a kid. So I don't I think I have a whole picture of the movie. I think Laurie Petty is amazing. I don't understand why she never got to lead a movie again. Like, did this, like, ditch her Because career? Hollywood sucks. That's why. Oh, she that's... was so likable I, in this. I feel like I'm sugarcoating my opinion of this movie quite a bit. I'm saving it for the bad. So I, I have some bad. thoughts on why she didn't lead a movie again after this. Um, I want to say a few more good things. positive for another couple bad. minutes here. And, um, you know, we've got some cool Stan Winston. Uh, that's what I want to talk the, about. Yes. Stan yeah. yeah. Winston. Do you think it was that the, the makeup effects were that? I mean, Stan Winston. Like, no, this is what I love about Stan Winston. Way better. Stan Winston, you know, so they had these puppet, these mutant kangaroos with these puppet ears, right? And so those are all animatronics. And so there's two people working on the animatronics for every face, every tank girl face that has a mutant kangaroo. There's two people off screen controlling, helping to control those things. So when there's five kangaroos, there's you know, 15 people really on camera. It's crazy. And Stan Winston wanted to do this movie so badly that he cut the rate in half. He accepted half the money just so that he could be in behind doing that challenge of making those kangaroo people. Right? You they don't look that great. Ice tea kangaroo? Ice tea! Yeah. Ice tea is a kangaroo. Yeah! yeah. I mean, I, I heard someone someone was busting his balls about making this movie, and all he, his return was uh, his reply was, "I was paid eight hundred thousand dollars to make." And, this. and the journalist shut the fuck up and just moved right on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we should do an iced tea review of Surviving the Game. If you guys have not seen that movie, it is awesome, and he's the star in it, and it's so good. So we should, we should maybe do that one coming up in a future episode. Uh, you know, the soundtrack's pretty good, I think, for uh, Tank Girl. Um, I also like the animated sequences. That's what I was about to say that we haven't brought up. They worked really hard. Like, they wanted to make it feel, you know, even if they didn't have the support, really, of the creators, like, they really wanted to lean into the comic book side of it. So you've got these really cool moments where they'll they'll be in a scene, and then they'll cut into animated, and it'll look like comic book animation, and they'll just continue the scene in that and i thought i thought those like were almost seamless and i thought it was really fun the way that they do that like at the point when they're when they're decorating the tank and uh, jet girl gets hit in the hit in the head with the with the the bow of the tank like it's something that wouldn't have worked right i wanted to see more of that actually i've i read somewhere that this was a budgetary constraint that stuff that they couldn't do 
with the tanks, using a tank, doing cool tank stuff was too expensive. So they animated it. But I actually wish that there had been like 30% more crazy animations. I, I think, think I would have preferred it as just an animated show. Yes. Ah, that... then we wouldn't have had Lori Petty. I, she could do the voice. She, she had a voice issues in a bunch of animation at work. They could have done a reverse Who Framed Ro- Roger Rabbit style where only Lori Petty isn't animated. <laughs> So, like a cool world kind of thing. Before yeah. before we get into the bad, because I know you guys have stuff to talk about it. So the one of the one of my favorite scenes is when they when they use the tank and their newly found jet, and they're doing the scene where they're where they're gonna uh, get the semi truck uh, full of like resources and all that. So, like, I thought that was such a fun action scene. Yeah, yeah, it's and like, her standing on the on the gun of the tank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I great. think she did that for like somewhat for real like and and she, she was like terrified just yeah. Terrified, yeah. yeah yeah great scene i wanted more uh there's just one little panel of the comment that goes sliding by with the brain the human brain that goes into the tank right i wanted an entire sequence where she's like a montage of her training her tank and its brain to be her pet i'm sure that's on the cutting room floor somewhere Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that at all. Why was the tank? I, I missed that whole part. And I, wa- I paid for it to rent this thing on iTunes. Andrew, come on, man. Five dollars. <laughs> but yeah, Andrew, I, I will give you five dollars. I don't I don't want to see it that badly, guys. It's, it's I, I want you to see it that badly. Though. I know you do, but I don't want to commit an hour and a half to watch it. <laughs> I watched Rambo. I watched three Rambo movies and I paid for <laughs> of them. I bought two of those movies. You I, owe her, Andrew. Uh, her, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a movie. You know what? <laughs> Just for you, Andrew, I'm gonna go pick yeah. one of the. I'm gonna make you watch the Notebook. Yep. I love the Notebook. I've I'm gonna seen make it like you watch times. Failure to Lunch. Oh, it's such a great movie. I love Failure uh, to Lunch. I'm gonna make you watch. Wait. Mm, oh, Battlefield Earth. Oh, I watched oh, it last God. night. No, <laughs> son of a bitch. We're never watching Battlefield Earth. No, I did it once in a movie theater. I paid for it. <laughs> okay, so great. Bad. We're doing Battlefield. Battlefield You're a filthy Earth. man, animal. That's I'm, not you are. I'm not rewatching it. Not rewatching it. No, you have to. <laughs> no. This is this is uh, restitution. <laughs> so Tank Girl's pretty cool and badass, and so is Miss Meow. Uh, can we talk a little bit about uh, your upcoming Kickstarter, uh, Murphy? Yeah, we take off my my Tank Girl hat and put on my. My Miss Meow hat. Uh, Miss Meow is uh, the the anchor character of the Merc Publishing Universe. She is a she's got the biggest organization that she's like the only one that's against the pretty much the powerhouse of the Merc world. And we have issue number four of her series coming out. If you read issue number three, there was a really big reveal. So you're going to get to learn about really kind of the in and out of Miss Meow's organization. And we're going to get into some fun action in this next issue. So check out Miss Meow number four on Kickstarter from Merck Publishing uh, this February. And with, it goes without saying, but just in case someone is unfamiliar with comic books on this Kickstarter, you can get issues one, two and three and four. Oh yeah. Of Miss Meow. Oh yeah. We always do. We always do like a catch up tier. Uh, maybe it'll be, you know, like the cat and mouse tier. So you can just get a little bit of everything. So in the description of this video, there is a link to the current Miss Meow Kickstarter and to Merck Magazine. So go out there and check these uh, these sites out and support Murphy on her uh, awesome new um, projects. The bad. Yeah. Uh, Put your helmet back on, Murph. We're going to talk <laughs> about the bad. Hang on. Let's get into the bad. Let's talk about it. Oh. Uh, what did we not like about Tank Girl? You Stupid can fucking kangaroo. Some asshole just kept saying no, no, no to anything good. And they just kept cutting and cutting and cutting. Ugh. They cut an hour after the uh, what was original. That's why the animated pieces are in there. Is because half the stuff they've... They, the creator said they missed like 10 major scenes out of the source material that they should have filmed and didn't. Which is why they end up inserting so many animated pieces into it to kind of complete it. And then a lot of stuff they did film was so far from the source material. Like it was a lot of like Benny Hill joke kind of stuff that was didn't fit properly that they end up cutting a lot of it. So they had to do the animated stuff to actually hit the runtime. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had a complete movie. This I would movie. really love to see like a director's cut of the original, the original Tank Girl. I mean, oh, be I would die for that. I would like an entire spinoff series of films, maybe three or four of them at least 
of a hologram head villain guy. <laughs> right? We could just call it hologram head. And it would what a great moment to be ridiculous. Like I hated every second of him with the hologram head at the same time as loving every second of it. So it sort of like straddles the good and bad for me. I'm like, wait, he has a hologram head here. What is happening? Amazing. That's what I kept thinking. And then the bucket of water, he gets defeated by a bucket of water. <laughs> Fuck off. That's what he, I... gets, uh, he gets defeated by a beer shot out of a tank. Add a bucket of water. Oh my god! What was the boyfriend's name? The kangaroo, the booga, booga, booga. 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 I want to see what they cut, which was um, yeah, there's booga, a sex scene with the booga. sex scene. I want yeah. to see the sex scene where they're just reclining after sex because apparently it showed booga's five thousand dollar prosthetic penis. I want to see that. I, I'm, I want I'm, I'm bummed that, that MGM. <laughs> <laughs> You can probably buy it somewhere. I'm sure I could. <laughs> oh my god! And Take get insisted on cutting it. Booga. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, honestly, Booga's Booga's one of the things that that is is uh, hard for me in that movie because it's. Uh, He's so lovable in the comic. You're He's Murphy. So Got lovable the act. in the comic, and they really, they really just are are so perfect. And you know, they they tried. They, he's more of a puppy. You know, I mean, he is a puppy in the movie. Um, so yeah, that that's definitely one of my negatives. But I'm I'm not I'm not with you guys. I do like the kangaroos as a whole, but yeah, it's, Booga was a was a disappointment for me. Like by far, the biggest my biggest issue with this movie is every single male character, including Booga, who's the least uh, offensive. But every single male character is a total pig and totally gross. And they're constantly this atmosphere of rape and rape jokes and and trying to get with the woman and every single character throughout the whole thing. And it made me want to have a shower. Honestly, it was just disgusting. I, I really did not enjoy the movie like very much at all because all the all the male characters are just terrible and it's like what i was saying about the uh like you can just tell a produced like some asshole producer that's what they kept in the part they could see of themselves right i mean and think of hollywood at that time you can there are it what you're talking about is indicative of so many stories of hollywood in that era and this era too but particularly then so the fact that it's there on screen as the part they were allowed to leave in the movie tells you something so there's another way to look at it they thought yes these are the things that they left in because they thought it's funny right we're looking at it now as yeah this is gross but it's it's a movie about these women that don't go for it so even if yes they were putting it in because they thought it was funny and they thought it was cool from like the female perspective it's still kind of like maybe like it's it's it made you uncomfortable to watch the whole time right yeah totally it actually made me feel bad about some of the like, uh, welcome. <laughs> It's it's but, just one of those things that you know it's it, Mark, yeah, you win a point in that round for sure. That, yeah, huh? yeah. You win a, a point in that round for sure. It's, but, it's something that I think that yeah, it's it's definitely a movie made by men, but it, it definitely kind of traverses now on like us kind of like be like, you see? <laughs> but it's but not it though. Shot, it was directed it by, by a woman. female yeah, female director, but mm -hmm. produced by men with the Hollywood by, yeah, gaping. Exactly gatekeeping system so yeah uh yikes yeah it, i agree yeah. with you george those parts are so cringeworthy but it's constant. there is a lot it's of not it. just a few parts it's like every male even the kangaroos even booka who was the most likable and i thought i kind of really felt like they're making a commentary like the most likable uh male character is half kangaroo half dog so he's not really like properly like a, a human man you know mm. all the human uh, characters are just I, yeah. but even then i mean they 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 go out of their or not go out of their way but the the two you know tank girl and jet girl they kind of use the way that they're being treated to get what they want throughout the entire film like they they convince the kangaroos to help them they go in and they they get all these men to pose for a calendar to find out what's in the crates like they use the creepiness of all the dudes around them to kind of further where they want to be 
Yeah, but they even extended it that like creepiness to the ten year old girl in the movie, which I thought was that was yeah. like a lot. Like I really found it like you know, I've got a nine year old little girl and the the sexualization of like that these male characters are putting on her, it's just I did not like it. Like honestly, it made me well, feel it's really good that it made you feel uncomfortable, I think. And they were the villains. And it's yeah. okay if villains yeah. we don't like. But it is a yeah, it is a problematic. Yeah, I'm not saying like to cancel villains and like like I actually it made me look at like some of my own writing because I do have like a a scene where uh, a woman is potentially assaulted and she fights off this guy and it's like it made me question like is that scene necessary and I think it is in my in my writing and my story that I've, I'm telling there it's, it's in my book Resilient and. Uh, um, it, it is a turning point for the character and I think it has like it's a real resolution of this woman who's been severely injured standing up uh, for herself not just emotionally but physically so I don't feel totally terrible about it but seeing this kind of portrayal of men in this way as entertainment had me questioning my own writing and well, and I had I actually had a similar experience recently. So we've got we've got a new writer now at at Merck that did one of our latest latest books, and um, you know he wanted to use that sort of experience as sort of a plot device to further her story. And I had to kind of take I had to put my foot down and say no, you know this is our main character. We're not going to do this to her. You know this is her story isn't about isn't about being broken down like that to to come out stronger. No, her story is just about being strong. And that's, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's, that's, you know, coming at it from the other side. Um, but it's definitely something that as writers, especially when writing women, people tend to lean into those things of assault and, and, you know, too, too easily as a plot device for female characters. And it's definitely not always necessary. If, if anything, it might most of the time not, not be necessary. And I think Tank Girl it, on this topic is related to this notion that as really the first female lead comic book character on screen, this had not been done before. And even at that time, if you look at the, the shelves of the video marketplace, not too many lead female characters in general, mm -hmm. right? And so you have this, this thing where the market is used to doing one thing and how it portrays women. And then the director is trying to do a different thing. And then when they're cutting it all up, only a certain mess is left behind. So there's a scene with, uh, I think it's Subgirl or something like that, where they go and there's this other uh, woman and I can't really describe the scene very well, but it was like some of the worst acting I'd ever seen in my life. And That's I'm like, supposed to be Courtney Love. Yes. She was going to play Subgirl. Yeah, she couldn't do it, right? Because it was yeah. pretty close to Cobain's death. Yeah, it was right after Cobain's death. And so we're right around there. Yeah, so... Had to bow out. There's some bad acting in this film for sure. I would say the movie is definitely not known for its great acting. No. <laughs> but you know what's amazing is those kangaroos are acting like there's some solid emoting in those guys layered in kangaroo makeup. Like I have to say, Ice T really brings it to the screen as a kangaroo man. <laughs> like, wow. This is one of the first roles for uh, Doug Jones, too, who went on to become like the famous prosthetics actor. It's true. He was one of the backup kangaroos or background kangaroos or whatever. He would just hop on once in a while when they needed it. Yeah, I think Ooh. so. And there's also the actor, the he's, he's the, the kangaroo, tail end. The kangaroo, the tail yeah, end. He was the tail. <laughs> the the kangaroo that was uh, playing the saxophone. He went on to be uh, in like House of Cards. Oh yeah. And he's he's a really talented actor, and I I in I. In, I enjoyed his performance as the kangaroo. Kind He's, of I think he is actually my favorite of the kangaroos. Uh, one thing we haven't brought up is the the secondary villain, um, CBS John Travolta. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's he, a great description of him. Oh, uh, I have always, always. He just. I'm not saying he did a bad job, but he just always. I just ah. Uh, maybe he said he did a good job at being such a freaking creep. <laughs> Yes, that because... was a pitch perfect description. <laughs> At its heart, the reason why we're having this heavy conversation around Tank Girl is that we know they were trying something new. It mm -hmm. didn't work, but it, there was an attempt at something that hadn't been done before. 
And so even when you fail, it ends up landing in the future as a point of contention, a point where we can talk about stuff, where it brings up the hows and whys, and we don't can't really say how it would have gone. You know, that's that's how you know there's art in there. <laughs> well, for better or for worse, I mean, did this pave the way for like comic book properties that were not obviously like the mainstream DC Marvel shit? Like, did it, did. It, yeah. did it actually open doors for this kind of stuff moving think, on forward? I think this character kind of paves the way for Harley Quinn. I was like, going to say, she is a yeah. proto Harley Quinn. Well, you look at, I mean, do you guys know who's actually in the process of trying to make a new Tank Girl movie? Margot now? Robbie. Yeah, Margot Robbie. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it, this is something that she's, she is like me. She is, she has loved Tank Girl since she was a girl. Even if this was a box office flop, uh, and it really just it really didn't do well in the theaters and really didn't, you know, pick up steam until, you know, very late, you know, years later. Girls, women, little girls, we 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 ate it up and we still eat it up. It's it may not be a good movie, but it is a great it's it's a great feeling that you get, you know, watching it. I get why Tank Girl is popular. Like I, I get like I said in the good, like she's resilient and she's tough and she's doesn't give a shit like she's you know making jokes while she's getting tortured and she's you know and making jokes and she's blowing guys up like it's but not just making jokes as a shield she's what, legitimately what? having a good time in her life yeah and it just so happens that the world sucks well the world really sucks right it's 11 years since it's rained like almost everyone you know would be dead like it's a real there's some big concepts in this, in this movie and, and in this story, and some cool sci-fi as- aspects to it. So it's it's not all bad. I don't like. I did not enjoy watching this movie. Well, okay, but and it's not all for bad. You guys, if you haven't, and, and for anyone watching, like if you watch the movie and you didn't like it, seriously, the comics are fantastic. I have a whole collection of them down here. There are so many. Like they go to space. They go they go to so many different places, especially when you read the comics that came after the movie. If you didn't like the movie, they didn't either. And they they do not hide that in the comics. It's this really kind of great thing of just them taking their own like shots at the movie every once in a while. It's I would definitely definitely check out the comic series. It's it's really wonderful and I will say uh this is one of my prized possessions is the, the first printing of the first four Tank Girl books. And I I will say the fact that they did put this in the movie made That's me, cool. it made it worth That's it. Cool. <laughs> uh, let's give our grades. Uh, what's the, the skinny for uh, Tank Girl? Two bomb bras out of two bomb bras. Nice. I will forever love this movie. Nothing will change that ever. Don't hold I'll, back. I'll give it I will a D. I will give it <laughs> uh I'll give it a D. Actually, I'll give it two D's, a double D uh bomb bra. <laughs> so that's, that's that's what I'll give it. <laughs> I I didn't like it, but I, I see why the character is endearing and uh there was there was some good parts of it, but overall it didn't work for me. Yeah. I'm not a fan, but I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's one of those, where, when I saw the trailer, I thought, oh my God, that's such a fun concept. And when I saw the movie, I was like, eh. And then trying to piece it together now from bits and pieces was even more <laughs> difficult. <laughs> so maybe I like it more than I think nowadays. I, I don't know. But um, I got to give it like two um, fake kangaroo prosthetic penises out of five. I think that this movie is a, uh, I'm so glad it was made even if it was a nightmare for everyone who worked on it to try and get it made um, because it did pave the way for a lot of things, um, including a hologram head character, which is, you know, that's wonderful. I'm going to give it three drill fingers out of five for um, having a hell of a lot of heart and trying to do something that films uh, rarely do, which is take a chance on something new. Awesome. Uh, All right. That's going to do it for another episode of inside movies. Uh, the Miss Meow Kickstarter is on now. So go out and uh, support that awesome new project. Uh, I've been George McHale, uh, joined by Andrew Buckley, Murphy, and GMB Kamichuk. Follow along with us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Uh, links to all those are in the uh, description of this video as well. Uh, until next time, peace.